Good morning. I am Reverend Lori Walters from Green Oak United Methodist Church. I'd like to welcome you to our, our Sunday worship service. Um, just one quick announcement before we begin. On April 29th, that's two Wednesdays from now, we will be collecting food and donations for the food bank here at the church. You can just drive through, come in the entrance, drive through, we'll take things out the window. And we pray that we collect a lot for the food bank for there are so many who are in need and this is one way we can help. Since we're not in church, we don't have our food collection going. So let's let's remember those who are in need. Let us come together on the 29th from 12 to 3. We will be out in the parking lot from those times and we will be collecting anything you'd like to give. We'll even take money. Um, so put that on your calendar please and, and join us in helping those in need. The Lord is present. The Lord is here. For Jesus told us where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there also. The Spirit never leaves us. So come with me now. Let us worship the Lord. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 16. As David said, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I, places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you did not give me up to show, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Please pray with me. God of signs and wonders, breathe new life into us this day, that our spirits may awaken to the joy and the hope of our glorious inheritance through the living Christ. Clear our vision, Holy One, that we may see the promise of Easter in the stirrings of this precious earth and the energy flowing from our bodies. Help us find the faith to believe where we have not seen that others may see in our living and in our loving the glory of the risen Christ. Amen. It is time for our children's message. I have a special treat for you today. This morning, Shotzi brought me a, a little chipmunk. The little it, it doesn't look like an infant, but it's a little chipmunk, so it must be a young one. And I wanted to show it to you, to show you God's creation. So let's see if I can get him to come out. Hold still. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. No, hold on, hold on. Okay. You stay right there. Oh, I gotta get my cross out of this way. Okay, you ready? Wait, no. Sit still. Sit still. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to show you. Ow! Ow! He bit me! Oh. Where'd he go? <laughs> Cut! Uh, well, I wanted to show you the chipmunk. Um, we have a job to do once we finish here and try to find him before, uh, before anything else happens, but I wanted to show you the chipmunk, but it, it's funny that, you know, you believed me that I had a chipmunk, even though you didn't see it. I told you I had one. You, you saw it jump out of my arms, so you believed that I had a chipmunk here to show you. You believe what you have not seen. And that's what we're asked to do with faith. We believe what we have not seen. Jesus came and walked on the earth. We know that because we're told. We didn't see Jesus. Jesus hasn't been here to walk with us in human form. But we believe. Um, we have the Bible to read with all the stories. We heard of the miracles. We witnessed. We witnessed things. So we believe. And that's what faith is. Believing what you have not seen. So I'm sorry I didn't get to show you a chipmunk. But thank you for believing me. So at this time, let us go to our Lord and let's pray together about our belief. Almighty God, we thank you for creation and chipmunks and the ability to share with each other. We thank you that we have this opportunity to come together with the children, your children of the world. And we thank you for strengthening our belief with your word, with your son, with your spirit. You've given us everything so that our faith may be made strong. And we thank you and we praise your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is the one you hear every year on this day. It is the second Sunday of Easter. And although we are reading this, this is not our primary scripture today. We'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, the disciples' first encounter with the risen Lord. Hear now the word of our Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive and give the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. 
Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Now Jesus appeared to the disciples for the first time in that upper room where they had dinner just a few nights before. They were hiding. They were waiting. Mary had told them Jesus was alive. But could he really be? They remembered all that Jesus had told them before he was taken. But could he really rise from the dead? While he had done many, many miraculous things in front of them, he even rose others from the dead. So maybe? Could it be? Then he appeared and he said, Peace. Be with you. This was probably the best they had felt since that time sitting around the dinner table the Thursday before. Peace be with you. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit unto them. That would give you peace. That would give us peace during this time. But wait. We have the Holy Spirit. It has been given to us as well. So peace be with you. Knowing we have the Holy Spirit and we have the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, why do we still have so much trouble with our faith? It's understandable. Even Thomas had his doubts. Thomas, one who had been with him through all the ministries and the miracles, he still doubted. He needed to see Jesus, to touch him, in order to believe. Jesus helps Thomas with this, his, his unbelief, his disbelief. He told him to touch his hands, touch his side. And Thomas looked at him and said, My Lord and my God, the proclamation of our risen Savior as God. Jesus still helps us with our disbelief. For we are blessed each and every day with the testimonies of these disciples and the others in the events of the Messiah. We have been given the book, the holy book with the scriptures to tell us of all that had happened. We are blessed with understanding of faith and how to believe. Jesus tells Thomas, have you believed because you have not seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. From the time of Jesus' ascension to our present day, we have not seen Jesus walk on this earth in human form. So we must believe in what we have not seen. We do have the testimonies written in the scriptures for us. We have the evidence of creation in the world around us. We have the love of our God that ties us together in a bond that completes our hearts to the one who sacrificed his life for us. Because of the events that followed that Resurrection Sunday, we have witnessed the risen Christ. And it is our faith in what we have witnessed that will set us free from death. We are going to read two accounts of Peter's testimony today. And who better to read but Peter? He understands us. He's done everything before us. He proclaimed loudly to love Jesus and that he would protect him from anything, only to deny knowing him and running to hide. But he came back. He came back. And he boldly proclaimed that Christ the King lives. Jesus forgave Peter. Jesus revived Peter. And we ask that Christ will revive us too. Our first scripture comes from Acts 
chapter 2, verses 14a, and then 22 through 32. Peter comes back very outspoken with his testimony to the truth that he says. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelite, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed him by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held by its power. For David, King David, says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. That is the psalm that we read for our call to worship this morning. Peter quotes King David. And Peter continues, Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is still with us today. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. What powerful words from Peter to help us with our faith that we can read what he saw, what he experienced, and to tell us so that we may believe as well. It's in these words that we hear the stories and we come to believe. Imagine if Peter did not write this letter. Imagine if the disciples stayed hidden in that room. The stories would not continue and this, we would not be here today testifying to our own faith. They were fearful, but they came out of that room and found the courage given to them through the Holy Spirit, and they shared their witness with the world. Peter also tells us in his first letter of our salvation in Jesus Christ. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials. So that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Even though you don't see him, you love him. And that is how it is to be. Yes, believe in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. 
and the glory of salvation will be yours. When Christ returns and looks into the hearts of us all, will the test of time reveal hearts of righteousness in his name? I pray that it's so. Amen. So we come together and we pray. We pray to our Father who loves to hear from us. We pray to our Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for it is through the name of the Lord that God answers our prayers. So I ask that you keep the numerous people in your hearts and in your prayers. For Tom in Michigan, we praise God that he is home and has been incident free. We pray that that last surgery worked. We pray for Tom and Dana that they are getting along. We pray for Jim that even in his own trials, he's standing right behind the camera. And we praise God for Jim. One day I'm going to run down and turn the camera around so you can see who's back there. None of this would be possible without those who have the heart for Christ, who hear a call and listen and do. So we thank God for all those who are stepping up even in this time of isolation and fear to continue the ministries of our Lord Jesus Christ. So would you please come with me into a time with the Father. Gracious and true, we come to you and thank you. Thank you for this wonderful world, this creation that you've given to us, for the birds that are chirping outside our door, for the sun that peeks out every once in a while, even the rain, for it nourishes this earth for little chipmunks that run free within the church. We thank you. Father God, we thank you even in the midst of these troubling times, for in a pandemic, your world is crying out. So we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we ask that you hear our prayers for mercy, that this will be resolved in your name, that all will see it is with your power that we come through this, that we will withstand the test and the trials with a stronger belief than before. Father God, we ask that you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be with those who are in the midst of their personal trials, with cancer and illness and age. There are many, Lord, who call out to you to take them home. And we pray with them that their prayers of mercy will be answered. We pray for those who are calling out for healing. We pray for those who cry out for friendship. For there's much going on, Lord, so much more than just the pandemic. For when that is over, there's still life's troubles in so many towns. We pray for those who are struggling now with the lack of resources, the lack of food, the lack of funds. This is something new for this generation, Lord. There are those still living who experience the Great Depression, and Lord, we pray to you that it does not go that far. Help us to restore the goodness of this world. Help us to restore the lives. But help us not to go back into the brokenness we were into the desire for materials, 
into the desire for power, into the desire for self. Help us look outward, Lord, not just at ourselves. And we know you hear our, our prayers, Lord, for our... Jesus told us that he stands beside you and he intercedes for us. So we call out in the name of Jesus that you hear each of our prayers. As we come together and we lift our voices to you as your children, praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, we have a special treat that Donna wanted to come and share her, her gifts with you. So as Donna sings our anthem today, let us go into a time of personal prayer to our Lord.
Christ is our delight and our refuge from the storm. The Spirit has given us a goodly inheritance and blessed us with abundance. Let us share our gratitude for the grace we have received by giving freely to a world in need of Easter joy. You may send your tithes and your offerings in to the church at Green Oak United Methodist Church, 1213 Green Oak, Buena Vista Road, McKeesport, VA, 15135. We have received from a very faithful congregation, and we praise God that they've not forgotten. So let us come into a time of thanksgiving. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, we rejoice that you are our chosen portion. You are our cup that overflows to eternal life. As we celebrate your Easter miracle of bringing life out of death, we express our gratitude and joy for a new life budding within us and all around us. Bless the gifts we offer you this day that they may bring hope and new life to a world that clings even now to the illusion of death's victory over the Lord of life. Hear our gifts, Lord. Bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that concludes our service for this day. I pray that you will continue to praise the name of our Lord throughout this day and this week until we gather once again next Sunday. You may join me for devotions each morning on Facebook. Uh, we read from the upper room at 11 o'clock, so feel free to come on over and join us. Um, all comments are welcome. So hear now the benediction. Through Christ, God has given us a new birth into living hope. Rejoice! Therefore, even if for a while we suffer various trials, and in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remember that life is stronger than death, love is stronger than hate, joy is stronger than sorrow, and the promises of God are sure. Amen. Amen.